Okay, you may be wondering why there's another video being posted about uh, how to replace a water pump and thermostat on an N55 BMW 3.0 turbo. Um, there are a couple, three very good videos out there already that step through this. Um, the difference is that my car is an F30. It's not the, uh, the earlier chassis. And I was surprised when I got in there that uh, the location of the parts is different and, uh, and the instructions varied. This is my personal car. I'm not a professional mechanic. And it's got the Sport package, but not the M Sport. So it's kind of that middle level. I removed the under tray already. And the interesting thing I found about this, I watched a bunch of videos. Mine's a little different. Obviously, there's electric power steering on this car, not hydraulic. So the bit about moving the power steering hose out of the way doesn't apply to this car. So no big deal there. What I really wasn't expecting was um, the sway bar seems to be mounted in a completely different location. And you can see it picking up here. And it's actually bolted to the top of this cross member. So there's no way to get that sway bar out of the way. I'm not sure it needs to come out of the way. It seems like there's quite a bit of space up here. This cross member is going to be a little bit of an issue, but there's the water pump. So you can get a good shot of the water pump there. The other thing that surprised me a little bit was the thermostat seems to be mounted directly above the water pump on this car. My understanding was that the thermostat was kind of off to the right of the water pump. On this car it's directly above. So I'm going to do the electrical connection first. Take off that main water pump plug. There's a clip, you can see it above mounted to the engine, it holds that wiring loom. So you got to pull the wiring out of that organizer clip before you can get the plug off. Alright, got that power connector off and now I'm going to undo that 6 millimeter hose clamp and let the coolant drain. Crack that hose open, took off the, or pulled back the clamp. Here comes the coolant. So here are the new parts while I'm waiting for that coolant to finish up draining. Right, so now that I have that first line out of the way, I can see the other feed line. I guess that's the output line. The one I took off is the input line. I, yeah, so that, actually that next line looks pretty easy to pull too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I monkey with the, the mounting bolts. All right, no problem getting to that at all. Got that second hose off the water pump. I'm going to try unbolting the pump now. Okay, so the top two were a piece of cake, E12 Torx. The top one is blind, but I got a ratchet on it here without taking anything else away. Um, if you work on older German cars, you're used to the socket contortionist act, but this wasn't too bad. Let's see if I can loosen this one up. Okay, that's the ratchet setup I used. Looks like a two inch extension just plus the uh, the Torx. I'm gonna try to drop the pump now through this little space. It looks like it's gonna come out. There. Uh, hanging up on, that's just the plastic thing. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that was actually pretty easy. All right, so pumps out and the thermostat is over here, above, in front, slightly to the left of it, looking at the car from the front. I'm probably gonna have to remove this air tube. And if I can get that side of the hose pulled out of the way, then I'll have pretty clear access to that thermostat. It took me way too long to figure out that quick disconnect. You gotta get a flathead screwdriver under that little wire piece and then do the same thing on the other side at the same time. Pull it away from the connector and it's got to disconnect the top mechanism and this little bottom part at the same time and then pull the hose off while you're holding those two little clips out there. Anyway, very clever. So now I should have a clear shot, sort of, up to the thermostat. So I'm going to take this duct off, this intake, um, and then hopefully just be able to grab those 
hose clamps. Okay, here's a better view of that second hose clamp on the thermostat. You can see it right down there and I'm putting a screwdriver down onto it. There. This way. Okay, so that second hose is off. So on the new unit, I've taken off this one and this one. So now I have to deal with this little electrical plug on top and then I have a quick disconnect here and another quick disconnect going off to the right as you stand in front of the car. This disconnect here, I've oriented this the same as it is in the car installed. So this quick disconnect is just going to pull straight out this little wire here. So I'm going to pop that up and then try to pull the unit back a little bit so I can get a better view of this plug. I managed to use a hook tool to get down onto that quick disconnect. You can not see it all. There it is. You can see the little wire down there. It needs to be pulled straight up toward the top. So I'm going to try to pull that thermostat back away from the radiator housing. There's a good shot of it. And I had to take a big old screwdriver and kind of lever it down and brace it on one of these mounting screws and then lever it toward the back of the car to get it to pop off as I wiggled it with my other hand. So I was able to maneuver off all those hoses and kind of get the thermostat up here now. Moving around there, the only thing left to come off is this plug here, the electrical. That's a screwdriver to lift up the little tab here. So this thing is different from all the other videos I've seen. The other one had mounting holes for bolts. This thing needs to come out the top for sure. Just got the electrical off and it looks like I can just maneuver it right over here and out. And there it is. So it's just a different part from the slightly earlier N55 cars. So installation is reverse of disassembly. All right, I got the two quick disconnects back on to the new thermostat and I plugged in the electrical. I did one quick disconnect from the bottom and the big one from the top. So now it's just a matter of getting the rubber hoses back on and clamped. The thermostat's in and all the hoses are hooked up. I, did, I went ahead and did the quick disconnects and clipped them shut but I left the hose clamps loose on the rubber hoses. Now it's time for water pump. Still has a plastic impeller. Cheap. Got my three brand new E12 stretch bolts. Alright, I have the new pump located in the right spot. And before I do any bolts, I'm gonna put the two hoses on, not clamp them down, but put them onto the, uh, the pump. All three of those bolts are in now. And that top bolt is blind, but you can feel it. So you can maneuver it into the hole with your hand up there. And then this is what I use to get it tightened up. Uh, universal on a little extension with the, uh, the Torx and then a, a long extension. Just started it by hand. Lots of conflicting information out there about torque values on these, these one-use aluminum stretch bolts. Saw one guy on a YouTube video saying eight foot-pounds plus 90 degrees, and that sounds right to me. So I went with 85 inch-pounds, slightly under eight pounds of torque, and then I torqued them another 90 degrees, and that seems fine. Filled it up with about a gallon and a quarter of coolant, 50-50 diluted. Started the bleed process, battery chargers on it, battery reconnected, ignition on but engine not running, hold down the accelerator for 15 seconds, and then sure enough, the new pump came to life. I can hear it circulating coolant and I can hear bubbles coming up. The new pump is unbelievably quiet. You get used to how noisy the old one is. Looks good.